So good morning, everybody. Uh, we've, been we've been preparing for this press conference for a while, but certainly the script changed a little bit with the news yesterday, which is all good. So I'll tell you that uh, before we get into what I have to present to you, I want to uh, issue a lot of thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Roger Dow, <clears throat> his team at U.S. Travel, uh, City of Las Vegas, State of Nevada. Uh, every year we bring the world of our stakeholders to one city and hold that city up, that state, and then otherwise promote the entirety of the U.S. And under extraordinary circumstances, the environment they provided is... I think a great example of us figuring out to how do we're going to get on top of the, once we're on top of it, as it seems like we're trying to get to, how do we continue to meet? Uh, I would like to thank uh, our board. People ask me about our board. We have an 11-member board, and they're uh, industry leaders from all over the, uh, the country. Uh, and there's three that are here uh, in attendance. Uh, our board chair, Kyle Edmiston, who's with the uh, uh, Lake Charles Southwest Louisiana Convention and Visitors Bureau, Noel Irwin Henschel, who's with American Tour, Ameritours International, Todd Davidson, I'm not sure if he's here, I think he's on a panel uh, from Travel Oregon. You know, uh, we always get a lot of credit uh, as it relates to Brand USA and our accomplishments, but I would say over my entire 10 year history, we've asked our board to have some courage and to trust us and, and to support us, and I would say without fail, they've done that, and much of what we've been able to do over the course of this pandemic, uh, going into it, uh, navigating through it, and then now as we have a chance to really focus on coming out of it. Uh, without their support, we would not have been able to do what we do. Uh, and then I'd like to acknowledge, and I'm the biggest fan of the public-private partnership that we have. We could not do what we do if it weren't for our, our federal government. And certainly, uh, Secretary, Secretary Morgenthau, uh, Director Isabel Hill, uh, the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, they are the, our touch point with the uh, nine federal agencies that we have a relationship with that touch travel and tourism and what we do every day. And without their leadership, uh, without uh, what they do every day, their fingerprints are all over a lot of what's happened here recently, and I just want to publicly thank them for, uh, for everything they do. Uh, and there's, there's only two left. I want to thank our team, uh, the leadership here on the front row, many of them that are like school kids in the back row. Uh, Without them, uh, I have the privilege of calling uh, these ladies and gentlemen my colleagues, and uh, I am so proud of how they dealt going into this pandemic, uh, what we've done throughout it, and then now that we have a chance to look beyond it, it's great. Lastly, thanks to each and every one of you. You're going to hear a lot of what I'm talking about this morning is about being our nation, nation storyteller. Uh, you know, we get paid to tell the stories, uh, but you all are such an integral part, as Roger said, of helping us tell our story. And so for that, we appreciate uh, that. We never take it for granted. And we want to do everything we can do to help you tell our story. Uh, so here we go. Let's do a little bit of that. Um, I'm thrilled to see us reuniting and coming together again. Uh, as an industry family, and it's truly a family. I, I tell my wife all the time, who's a lawyer, she doesn't understand what I do for a business. Uh, my kids thought I was a travel, high-paid travel agent. And I said, yeah, I am that, but uh, we, do, we do so much more. You know, this global pandemic uh, has resulted in a lot of uh, loss and hardship for very, very many. Needless to say, our travel and tourism industry was impacted disproportionately uh, around, in this country and around the world, uh, like nothing we've ever seen uh, in our existence. All of this makes the role that Brand USA has had, uh, as we've evolved it now over 11 years going into our 12th year, really, really as important as ever. Uh, we have a great opportunity and we understand that's a responsibility and we take it very seriously that you know, we're not the only ones impacting international travel, but the value proposition that we have had over these years uh, has contributed to incremental visitation and spend. And so we really appreciate that opportunity. We take it very seriously. Uh, we know the road to the next normal. A colleague of mine helped me uh, uh, realize that phrase. Uh, new normal was worn out pretty much in the first month. Uh, next normal is still being defined, and even with the news that we got yesterday, we're not going to be to the final end uh, normal until uh, a, lot, a lot more time uh, going to occur. Uh, but times of crisis create opportunities for evolution and growth. I can tell you, uh, we as an organization, we as an industry, and all of us as professionals in it have evolved, have had to evolve and had to grow uh, over the course of this pandemic, and, and certainly uh, that's been a great, uh, a great thing. And I have to say, the spirit that we felt when we first got here, uh, uh, and I guess the spirit for new journeys, now that we have a chance to re recreate those, is really, really exciting.
But before I unplan our plans for reentry and recovery, uh, I want to take a moment to up update you on where we are today, uh, where we've been, and then uh, what's, what's ahead uh, in the months moving forward. As I said, the economic fallout from the pandemic uh, has been felt most acutely by our travel and tourism industry, again, in this country and around the world. Uh, it, it was like nothing we've ever seen, and so now we have a chance to build it back. Money in the numbers that you saw Roger uh, talk about this morning, according to U.S. Travel, inbound international travel has historically been our nation's number two uh, overall export, but it's our number one service export. People say, how is it an export? Well, the product is the experiences and memories people uh, have and take home, and then the money to leave behind. So it's a major uh, contributor to our economic engine, and uh, it does it on a regular basis. In 2019, the last year that we had some semblance of what the old normal used to look like, travel exports were $233 billion. That's a quarter of a trillion dollars. Uh, it delivered a $51 billion trade surplus, meaning uh, more of you traveled here than, uh, than we traveled outbound, and it directly supported 1.2 of the nearly 10 million jobs that are uh, supported by our industry. But in 2020, even with a really strong first quarter, uh, travel exports dropped uh, uh, by 76 percent. Uh, that was, I was actually, sorry, arrivals dropped by 76 percent. Travel exports dropped by 64 percent to just $83 billion and a year-over-year -year loss of $150 billion just in that one year. And then certainly the years since, until the news of yesterday, have been equally uh, impactful and unfortunately equally and in many ways more negative. Simply put, travel is, uh, fuels the U.S. economy. And uh, we are well aware of that, and certainly you are too, as you've heard uh, us talk about that. And we knew early on that the return of international travel was going to be one of the last things that came back. Uh, Roger talked about the meetings in the convention uh, industry, and certainly that's taken a huge hit, and we still have a ways to go to be able to bring that back to where it was. But travel and the international portion is going to be the last to recover. I agree with Roger 100%. Uh, smart people that are economists and forecasters suggest that it could be four years before we see 2019 numbers. I disagree entirely. I think it's going to be way more than that. So while it's true that air travel has been available from, to the USA from Canada and Mexico and hundreds of other companies, uh, all many are represented here in this room, uh, many challenges still remain before international travel, international travel will truly uh, return. The announcement yesterday was the biggest and most impactful announcement we needed, but imagine just what it's going to take uh, for our federal government to be able to uh, allow that to happen and therefore our industry to get back to a point where they're going to be able to provide the service and the, and the hospitality that they're accustomed to providing. So thankfully a lot of thought went into uh, announcing that we're going to open, a lot of thought went into giving us enough opportunity to be able to get us back on, on our feet, and so we're looking forward to uh, that November 1st date. After being separated for 18 months or more, the world is exhausted, uh, and we know that travel can renew and rejuvenate us. It does in the best of times, but certainly in these times, uh, there is so much hunger for travel that people are ready to go. In light of the administration's announcement yesterday, I'm happy to say that we're ready to welcome the world back to the United States. Over the past year and a half, Brand USA has been busy positioning the U.S. and our partners for a quick and robust return to international marketing. And we're so excited to be able to actually get to that point. Uh, we're, we're excited to lead the next chapter of recovery. As Roger said, uh, our, our country and the world has faced many crises in the past, and we're looking forward to, uh, to doing that. And whether it's a domestic or the international industry, this industry has proven to be very resilient uh, in the past, and this time is going to be no different. I think we're going uh, to respond, and the industry will respond uh, in ways that we can't imagine. Uh, to continue to influence key aspects of the travel and tourism in, in, in ecosystem, we're ready to uh, navigate our reentry and our recovery. Uh, in what we've been calling a state of readiness, uh, meaning that there were so many things that had to happen before we could ever get back to what we are used to doing, uh, we've, had, we've been uh, inspiring through content, uh, travel take, travel trade engagement, public relations, and a groundbreaking virtual B2B platform, our brand new say global marketplace. We've been keeping U.S. travel suppliers and global network of travel buyers and media and consumers, direct to consumers, connected until they can get back to traveling and get back to engagement like they're used to. 
The Brand USA Global Marketplace, I think many of you are aware of that. Many of you have been on that platform over the course of the past uh, 18 months. Uh, has become the industry go-to go source for virtual programming, training events, and one-on-one -on -one business meetings between travel buyers and suppliers and media. Uh, we had a lot of goals set and hopes uh, of uh, achievement going into creating our Brand USA Global Marketplace. And I can tell you, not only did we hit every one of those targets, but it provided so much more value that we could not have even imagined for an industry just hungry to stay connected. Uh, we've facilitated 5,000 meetings on the marketplace since the onset of the pandemic. And this platform continues to be an important tool, and it will have a role uh, in the months and years ahead. I think one of the legacy things coming out of this pandemic is Certainly face-to-face -face meetings are, the, are some of the most important ways for us to aspire at the very highest levels of accomplishment. And it's so necessary to, to the process, whatever the process is that we're meeting about. But I think uh, business will find a, a way to, uh, due to efficiencies in time and money, uh, that uh, a digital por a part of a meeting will still be a part of it. So we feel like our marketplace is going to have a critical role in that. We've also been planning for the gradual return to in-person meetings, uh, our ability to re-enter markets and, and do so in a, in a really deliberate way uh, as, they be, as they come open. This IPW for us, for the global uh, uh, international travel market, is one of the first times that we've had to meet face-to-face -face in the last couple months, and how exciting is it? I know on that first night, the opening reception, the optimism, the enthusiasm was just unbelievable, and then of course when the announcement was made, it just turned that into just crazy, uh, which is all good crazy, but uh, so glad to be able to be here and uh, to have that happen. Uh, next month, we're excited to host our third annual Brand USA uh, Travel Week Europe, and it's going to be in London for the second time. We inaugurated that event in uh, 2019. Uh, we weren't able to, to meet last year. That was one of the main reasons we built our Brand USA Global Marketplace. Uh, one of the first events we hosted on that platform was our Travel Week event last year uh, and digitally, and we're so excited to get back to London this year. And with the announcement, uh, we only had a few spots available uh, in our marketplace, uh, so those, uh, if you're interested, you need to get with the team because <laughs> they're gonna go quick. Um, in London, we'll convene U.S. travel suppliers and pan-European travel trade and media to discuss trends, uh, talk about the challenges, the new challenges we have coming out of this pandemic, innovations that have occurred even the, over the course of the pandemic, and certainly that will come out of it, while exploring strategies to drive future visitation to the U.S., uh, and we're really, really excited about that. Uh, and to keep key audiences as engaged, uh, we've been uh, leaning on uh, engaging video content. We recognize the opportunity during the pandemic. Uh, as so much of the world, consumers and trade alike, were stuck at home, burning through their streaming uh, queues, we had an opportunity to be respectful of the situation we're in, not be tone deaf, and really to fall back on all this content that we have been creating for so many years to tell the story of the USA. We didn't have to produce any new content. It was there and ready to be consumed. And as people were being distracted and otherwise wanted to be entertained, uh, it was there for them. Uh, through this first of its kind, Go USA streaming, streaming TV channel, millions of people around the world travel dreamed as they watch uh, more than 40 million minutes of entertaining and episodic content. Uh, while we paused creation of new con during, content during the pandemic, uh, we vastly expanded the reach of the channel through partnerships. In total, Argo USA TV con content is available in, a, in hundreds of millions, available to hundreds of millions of people across 220 countries. While being respectful of our circumstance, as I said before, and being patient for m so many things that had to happen that were outside of our control, we've continued to influence key aspects of the travel and tourism ecosystem. And this, this, this TV station, this streaming TV station, has, has been the way, way that we've been able to do that. Uh, this year at IPW, we're celebrating the power of standing united. Uh, we're here celebrating the uh, travel's ability to connect people, to connect cultures, to connect dreams, and to tell stories. Over the past year, it has, been, it has become abundantly clear how many people over the world feel the need to explore and reconnect. Uh, whether inspiring travel, dreaming in their living rooms, uh, uh, or curating road trips closer to home, our industry has adapted to a changing world and found ways to continue to talk about and promote travel with a determination to overcome the obstacles we faced. 
This was a generational world pandemic, and it affected us in ways that we could never have imagined. And all of us were able to rise to that uh, challenge and to uh, do it in a very compelling way. When thinking about the future, we're excited to welcome the world back to the breadth of possibilities the USA has to offer. Uh, we're our, our, our all inspiring destinations and small town gems and local favorites. The diversity and proximity of our places and our experiences, the diversity of our people, have always been the calling card and the hallmarks of what makes the USA the USA and the experiences you can have here. You know, a lot of my colleagues around the world say, you know, Chris, you can have any experience you can have in the US any, uh, and lots of places around the world. And I say, well, I'll give you that, but you can only have the USA experience here. And the way that we deliver those experiences uh, is the iconic pop culture, the way that people see it from outside the borders and then get to experience when they come. All of you, as well as our travel trade partners, help us remind our friends and visitors from around the world why they love to travel to the USA. Whether for a first time encounter or for uh, to rekindle great uh, memories and experiences they had in the past. Amid this world pandemic, our travel advisor colleagues have seen an increase in the need for their services. Uh, given challenging travel policies, shifting airline schedules, rental car scarcity, and limited hotel inventory, even the most confident jet setters have been turning, have been turning to their travel advisor pros for help. And certainly, as demonstrated by a lot of the questions that were asked uh, in Roger's press conference, as we look to and point to this November start, there's so much information that's going to need to be made available. And we promise you that through the channels that we have, uh, legally, when we were created, there are two things that we're responsible for. First is to promote the entirety of the US, all 50 states, five territories in the District of Columbia. And the second is to communicate travel policy either what's already in place or what uh, changes. And certainly, what's going to happen uh, leading up to November 1st and beyond is going to be a lot of change and a lot of information that you're going to need. So through all the ways that we have that we can do that, we're going to do uh, it the best way we can. According to a June poll conducted by the American Society of Travel Advisors, 76% of advisors are seeing an increase in domestic and international consumers uh, compared with pre-pandemic -pre -pre levels and 81% of advisors are hearing from new customers. So I've always said this is not a demand issue. This has always been a world pandemic that affected our industry disproportionately. So uh, the, the travel dreaming and the desire to travel and the desire to return to it has never waned. Many of these travelers' needs are chain, have, have been changing over the past year and a half and certainly will be changing a bunch moving forward. Uh, these visitors are telling us in our sentiment surveys that they want to travel with a purpose, uh, either to a meaningful des uh, destination or with the impacts of their journey in mind. So sustainable travel and all the impacts travel has uh, around this country and around the world, our, our visitors are very cognizant of that and they want to be, uh, uh, travel with purpose. Others want richer virtual experiences to, off, uh, to help offset uh, in-person events that many of them couldn't do uh, over the past couple years. Uh, when they are ready to book their trips, and certainly that time has arrived, these travels want their future bookings to enrich their, enrich their lives, broaden their travel horizons, while supporting the communities that they visit. Uh, you know, the experiences are delivered by our destination marketing partners and all the brands that deliver the experiences on the ground every day, and our, and our visitors are looking forward to that. They want to shop local and spend with diverse-owned businesses while helping to foster local traditions and cultural awareness and understanding. Travel has the unique potential to come back stronger than ever in the years to come and reclaim its position as an engine for growth, equality, and prosperity for people all over the world. Travel also sparks cross-cultural interaction among people from different nations, uh, which builds understanding and respect. While being physically distant, we've stayed connected virtually to continue to experience different ways of life, discover new food and customs, uh, and visit culturally and historic sites on digital platforms. We plan to keep these connections growing, going, and growing further. Uh, we've been leaning into our, our award-winning United Stories campaign to create meaningful connections with potential visitors by using a collection of voices which define the story of the USA. This campaign enable enables us to give voices to real travel experiences within the USA to, uh, to create authentic, locally relevant, and positive, positive engagements with consumers. We're pleased to unveil 
I'll call it a hero content piece, a short hero content piece designed to rally the travel and tourism community. This morning we'll give you a quick glimpse into what the latest evolution of our United Stories campaign uh, uh, will look like and a campaign that we look forward to launching soon. Before we play the video, let me share a few words inspired by United Stories that are the creative platform that our team uses to, cons to convey the sentiment of the campaign. So here we go. The USA story is written by everyone. Each chapter different than the next, every page transcribed by, from travelers and locals alike. Our story is written by every gender, every generation, every color, every culture, and every character. It's a, it's a story of wide open spaces, open restaurants, and open hearts, of breathtaking diversity of our lands and our people, of warm welcomes, adventures around every turn, and lifelong mem memories made off the beaten path. Our United Story is written with ellipses and never a period. So we ask others to help us write our story here and extend our story. Because here in the USA, there's a page waiting for you. It's time to write your story. The story of the United States has been written for centuries, penned by millions of authors, written in every language, from every perspective. It's an epic adventure, a love story, and a mystery. Full of twists and turns, newfound discovery, and a cast of unforgettable characters. With every chapter as unique as our people, our history, and our land. Every sentence crafted in exquisite detail. Every page different from the next. Our collective story is one made up of many. And there's a page waiting for you. Find your story in the USA. So that's just a little glimpse of uh, the next ev evolution of our United Stories campaign. Uh, for those of you that I know and have heard me say this in the past, I love uh, really simple things that are very powerful. I think those two words, the power of those two words, uh, you know, the interesting intersection of the United States of America and our United Stories, I think has a tremendous potential. And this is a platform that we're creating certainly to tell our stories, and we're inviting the world to tell theirs. because. Uh, the stories of the United States have been told by so many voices for so many years, decades of, of time, and this is our ability to be able to bring all those stories to one place. We aim to reignite the excitement of travel and the lifelong memories it creates. Brand USA, our partners, and the entire country are getting ready to welcome the world back. You have an open invitation to come make your, star, your story a part of ours. Together, we're building the future, the new future of the U.S. travel and tourism industry. Together, we're all marketing the USA. And we're very appreciative of uh, what you guys do here and what you'll do when you leave here and your contributions to those stories, those United stories that we're all going to enjoy.